Hello, welcome to this video where we look at parametric surface area. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this journey. Uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully you find it useful. So surface area will be attained by taking a curve and revolving it around either the x-axis or the y-axis. And so um, functions could be y is a function of x or x is a function of y. And now we want to be able to consider where we have x as a function of t and y also a function of t. t is our parameter. And t lives between some known values a and b. All right. And so we have ds, which is our small piece of arc length. That's part of the calculation, both for arc length and for surface area. When y is a function of x, it's 1 plus y prime squared under a radical. When x is a function of y, it's 1 plus x prime squared under the radical. And that integral is with respect to y. But when you have x is a function of t and y is a function of t, it is dx dt squared plus dy dt squared all underneath a radical and your integral is with respect to t. Okay, let's remember what's going on with surface area. When you revolve around the x-axis, it turns out that your radius is y. But you can't have a y in a t integral. So you got to replace y. What are you going to replace it with? Go back to the parameter, parametric equations. You'll have the y is equal to g of t. So replace that radius y with that formula t. And then you'll be able to hopefully integrate the formula that you have there. And the integral is going to go from a to b because that's what t does. All right. If you're going around the y-axis, then your radius is no longer y. Your radius is equal to x. Can't have x in a t integral. Replace what x is. Go back to the parametric equations. You'll find that x is f of t. All right. So these are the two setups, depending on which one you have, which axis you're rotating about. Uh, let's look at an example. So x is 2 root t, y is 1 minus t, and we're going for t's between 0 and 15. Now you don't have to have a graph, but it's helpful to have a sketch to make sure you understand what's going on with the, um, the curve. So when t is 0, the, at least know the end point. So when t is 0, you'll have x is 0 and y is 1. You'll be, at the, you'll be on the y-axis, and then here's what the graph will look like. Um, you're revolving around the y-axis. And so just to help you remember what's going on with the radius, like why is the radius equal to that? What you're doing is you're getting a, um, the distance uh, for a typical place on the curve. You're getting a distance it is away from your rotation axis. That horizontal distance is x. Your radius is x. But you can't have x inside the integral. We'll deal with that on the next slide. Here's the visual of the actual rotation of our curve and how it leads to a three-dimensional area that we can measure. Our job, how much purple paint will we use to paint this shape, either inside or outside, doesn't matter. All right, let's go to the next slide to do that computation. Find the surface area generated when the parametric function below is rotated about the y-axis, just as it, it was in our example. The radius is equal to x, but we can't have x inside of a t inter integral, so we'll put in the f of t formula, so 2 root t. Now you have to deal with this ds, this dx dt quantity squared plus dy dt quantity squared, all underneath a radical, step by step. What is x's derivative? What is dx dt? So you have this 2 out here. Leave that there. Root t's derivative is 1 over 2 root t. So the 2's actually cancel. And x is, dx dt will be just 1 over root t. Y dy dt? Oh, that's just negative 1. Your job, square these. And then add them. One's a fraction, one's not. Let's put them together as one fraction. So change the 1 to be t over t. And you'll have 1 plus t all over t. Next job. Take a square root, but it's a fraction, so we're going to end up taking the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. All right, and then that's going to be taking the place of that radical in our formula, and magic happens. The root t that was part of our radius formula from the x, and the root t who is the denominator of our ds root, they cancel out magic and we arrive at an integral that is very doable. The uh, the twos 
They can come outside with as a four. The pi can come outside. The integral goes from zero to 15 because that's what T does. And you're just integrating one plus T underneath a radical. Because one plus T has itself as its derivative, you can just treat it like it was root T. The antiderivative of root T is T to the three halves to times two thirds instead of dividing by three halves. So we're going to have the same thing. One plus T to the three halves times two thirds. Our job, plug a 15 in, plug a zero in. And those numbers are specially chosen, so it's computable without a calculator. 15 plus 1 is 16. 16 to the 3 halves is doable because you'll take the square root first and get a 4, and then you'll cube and get a 64. And then 1 to the 3 halves is just a 1. Um, outside, the 2 thirds from integration multiplied by the 4 pi to give you 8 pi over 3. Keep the constants outside. Don't put them in. 64 minus 1 is 63, and amazingly, 63 is divisible by 3. It's crazy. So we don't have a fraction. That's actually 21 times 8 pi, which we can go ahead and do without a calculator. It's not that bad. The final answer is how much paint, purple paint, that was necessary in the, in the previous um, animation that we had. 168 pi, it's area, so unit squared. All right. Thanks for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Please like and subscribe. Comment down below. Um, hope you got something out of this. Um, I, I'm put it up for my students, but hopefully anybody who's watching can understand it and follow it. And um, I'll be sure to uh, put, post more videos. Let me know in the comments if you want to see certain videos about certain topics. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks again.